The Atlas V rocket is one of the largest currently available for interplanetary flight. It has already propelled Insight and Curiosity to Mars. So what is planned next at Cape Canaveral? Stick around to find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to Elder Fox Documentaries. Today's video will feature everything you need to know about the upcoming launch to Mars. We hope you enjoy it. Let's start with a bit of an existential question. Why Mars? Well, for one thing, human curiosity. We have planted feet on the moon, so Mars seems like the next logical destination for a manned mission. But lofty goals require plenty of forethought and research. The pull of the unknown draws us to Mars. Sure, Columbus headed west and Marco Polo headed east, explorers looking to map uncharted lands. But this was on Earth, our home, not another planet. Sending people to Mars seems like the next giant leap for mankind, but it really is a journey into the unknown. Before we send a crew of brave men and women on an almost two-year journey spanning 100 million kilometers, we had better make sure that they can thrive once they get there. Sending robotic probes to scout ahead can answer key astronomical questions about the potential for life on Mars, not only giving us information on whether Mars was once capable of sustaining life, but also whether there is a potential to build a habitat and populate the planet. The Perseverance rover represents the latest in a long line of remote robotic exploration vehicles sent to the Red Planet over the last 44 years. It seeks to answer further questions raised by its predecessor, Curiosity, which made its landing on Mars in 2012 and was the most ambitious mission flown by NASA at that time. This little engine that could has now been on Mars for almost eight Earth years, 2,835 Mars days to be exact. It has fulfilled its primary mission of finding evidence of organic molecules and geological change on Mars. It continues to explore and search for water in the form of ice. So where does the Perseverance fit into the mission? Perseverance, although based on Curiosity's design, will carry different instruments to better probe for ancient life. The main goal will be to both confirm that past conditions were habitable and also look for signs of actual microbial life. Sorry to disappoint, but the rover is not likely to encounter little green men. But first, it has to make touchdown. It's the reason why Curiosity's blueprint was used as a basis and improved upon. NASA hopes to replicate its success. This video is made from a series of images Curiosity took on its way through the Martian atmosphere. The frame rate is low, but we can see Mars as Curiosity did when it descended. Looking back at Curiosity's famous seven minutes of terror landing sequence gives us a valuable insight into the way Perseverance will make its approach to the red dust of Mars. This process may look crazy, but it's the culmination of the combined engineering knowledge of some of the best minds on this planet. There is pretty much a zero margin of error. It will take all of seven minutes to reach the surface from the top of the atmosphere. The kicker is that it takes 14 minutes for information to be beamed back to Earth. There will be no opportunity for human intervention. The descent must be controlled autonomously by the onboard computer. The approaching craft will initially hit speeds of 30,000 miles per hour and must decelerate to zero miles per hour in perfect sequence and timing in order to not sustain damage. Nothing can go wrong. Once entering the atmosphere, the heat shield encounters such severe aerodynamic resistance that it glows like the surface of the sun, hitting a temperature of 1600 to 2100 degrees Celsius. Not only does the craft have to be slowed down tremendously quickly, but it also has to be guided to the landing site. By the time the parachute deploys, the craft is still traveling 1000 miles per hour. 
It's the largest and strongest supersonic parachute ever built. It opens so fast that it pulls nine Gs. At this point, the heat shield must detach. Like a lens cap on a camera, it will be blocking the radar's view of the ground topography and distance. The radar has to take altitude and velocity readings at an exact, precise time or else the landing will fail. The parachute will only slow it down to 200 miles per hour, nowhere near slow enough to land. There is no choice but to detach and cover the remaining distance with retro booster assist. The next issue is that the rockets can't be used all the way to the ground as they will kick up dust, covering the rover and damaging mechanisms and instruments. This problem is solved by using the sky crane maneuver. 20 meters above the surface, the rover is lowered below the lander on a tether that gently deposits its wheels onto the surface. The bridle is then cut away and the lander flies away to a safe distance to avoid landing near or on top of the rover. Once on the ground, the team at NASA can breathe a sigh of relief. The Jezero crater was chosen by NASA as the landing site for the Perseverance rover. The topography of the area looks amazingly similar to the structure of the Mississippi River Delta found on Earth. The rationale is that if water is essential for life, then an ancient river system would be the ideal place to look. The theory is that three and a half billion years ago, river channels spilled over the crater wall and formed an immense lake within the meteor impact crater. There is some evidence that water carried clay minerals from the surrounding area into the crater lake. Hypothetically, life could have lived in Jezero Crater during times of liquid water, and the sediments in the lake bed could be a source of their remains. After all, clay only forms in the presence of liquid water. Perseverance will use a similar process for entry, descent, and landing as Curiosity. However, improvements have been made to land the Perseverance closer to its prime specific target than any rover before it. As you saw with the Curiosity descent, it's already an extremely hard task to land on Mars, let alone within 10 kilometers of the primary region of interest. Medley 2 instruments will take recordings of temperature and pressure encountered by the heat shield and afterbody in the hope that the process can be further refined and made safe for future missions. Cameras and microphones will also help engineers understand the physics involved throughout the landing process, recording the deployment of the chute, detachment of modules, firing of the rockets, and the tether process as it unfolds for the first time. The added benefit is that the people looking on from Earth get a first-person view of what it's like to enter Mars' atmosphere and then land on its surface real footage, not computer-generated sequencing. The Perseverance rover design is largely based on the engineering design for the Mars rover Curiosity. The reliance on a proven system reduces mission costs and risks. Perseverance's long-range mobility system allows it to travel on the surface of Mars over a distance of 3 to 12 miles. It boasts a new, improved, and more capable wheel design. This is the first rover to carry a drill for coring samples from Martian rocks and soil. The samples are gathered and stored in tubes on the Martian surface, a strategy called depot caching. Caching will pave the way for future missions that could collect the samples and return them to Earth for intensive laboratory analysis. Future human exploration of Mars depends on a technology for extracting oxygen from the Martian atmosphere, which is 96% carbon dioxide. The caches will give vital clues as to how the process can be perfected. 
The new technology helps mission planners discover ways of using Mars' natural resources to support human explorers and improve designs for life support, transportation, and other important systems for living and working on Mars. The Perseverance rover will answer questions that Curiosity could not, but we must not forget the great work Curiosity has done. Click here to see new footage of Mars rendered for the first time in stunning 4K quality. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and let us know in the comments what you think the rover will find in the Jezero crater. Tell us, we love to hear from you. Thanks for watching Elder Fox.